All righty. Welcome again to Photoshop Party. Today we're going to be talking about uh, stacking photos, which is easier than you think. Once you see how it's done, you're going to go, that's it. That's all there is to it. It's amazing. So let me get into a couple of things really quick. Share screen. Hide these people over here. And I got that out of the way. Let's go to Photoshop. And can everybody see my screen? Yes. yes. Well, first things first, let's get the advertisements out of the way. Then we'll move on to the, to the next stuff. Um, June 9th through the 14th, Photoshop zero to 60 in a week at West Coast School. And if you don't want to put up with me for a week, we got a whole bunch of other classes. Um, Tim Myers last year, he's going to retire after 25 years at West Coast School. So if you're looking to take a Tim Meyer class for a week, this is the year to do it. If not, take Photoshop zero to 60. We're going to launch into from not so basics into some pretty advanced stuff, hopefully, depending on the class. Um, rule number one is you got to come to have fun, though. And so also, if you can't make it to West Coast School, and you want to take my class, I'll be teaching the same class at Texas School. This is um, April 28th through May 3rd, I believe it is. So if you want to take a great class, either one of those would make it make you happy and learn a little bit about Photoshop. A lot of fun. And if you're wondering how I went from there to there, I just hit the F key, or you can hit the tab key to get rid of all the toolbars and hit the F key brings up whatever black black background to take care of you. So let's go ahead and go back to that and close that one out. Don't save. Um, some people are complaining, asking me questions about why I don't see, let me do that one more time. Open again. Open this one. Um, they're not seeing their contextual box down at the bottom. So what you do is you go into window down to the bottom. It says contextual task bar. You can either turn it off or turn it on from there and get it up and running. Also, if you don't have your um, remove tool, which is a wicked cool tool. I've been using it for the last couple of weeks, retouching the heck out of things using that. Um, if it's not there, what you do is you go to your three dots down at the bottom of your toolbar on the left-hand side, go to edit toolbar, and it will be on the right-hand side. Normally, you'll find it at the very bottom. For some reason, they, they do that. And then just drag it over to the, to the left side, which is the active tools. And then click done and you're good to go. So if you can't find your remove tool, go to the extras and you'll find it down there. So any questions on those couple of things? Going once? Yep. No? No. Okay. Um, I have an image that I shot, well, several images where the front is in focus all the way down to where the back is in focus. Um, I shot it at F16 to show that even at F16, you're gonna have some issues with depth of field if you're up close. Um, and I did that on purpose so that it would do that. I was going to, I made it smaller to 2000, uh, DPI and what happened it takes so long to process I have to bring it down to a thousand PPI parts per inch or pixels per inch <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make it smaller fairly quickly it takes a little while but it's worth seeing I've selected all the ones that I want to use and I'm going to go to tools photoshop down to image processor. So tools, Photoshop to image processor. 
Right now they're set at 2000. I want to make it a thousand. And this is the last way I did it. Um, so it brought it up already. So I don't have to change anything, but my width, the widest one, if it's a landscape image will be a thousand pixels. If they're a taller uh, vertical image, it's going to be a thousand pixels. So it takes the longest size and makes it a thousand. I'm going to save as a JPEG. I'm going to save in the same location. And what that will do, it will save in a folder that it calls JPEG in the folder that you're running. So I've got all of them selected. Did quality of 12. In fact, you know what? Let's do a quality of 10. Let's speed it up even more. And then hit run. You can also run an action from there. And you can see how fast it's going through the images. I have a whole bunch of images. And as it goes through, you can almost see how it went from front to back being sharp. And there we go. That's how fast it went with, I don't even know how many images it is. But let's go ahead and we're going to have these selected also. Go to Tools, Photoshop, Load Files into Photoshop Layers. So what that's going to do is going to put all my images that I have into one image and what about 30 or so layers. I don't even know how many. And so super easy. I've got that many layers, a whole bunch of layers. So I'm going to select the top layer. I'm going to shift and select the bottom layer. What that does is selects all the layers. So far, so easy, right? What I need to do is go to Edit, Auto Align Layers. And I'm going to do it the easy way. I'm going to hit Auto. Click OK. This probably takes the longest amount of time. Um, I was on a tripod. I really don't have to do this too much, but just in case, I'm going to auto align all the layers. And it's going to take a second or two, as you can see. Mike, I have a question for you. What are you shooting? Uh, what camera are you shooting with? I was shooting with the Nikon D850. Okay. Um, and it has a focus stacking software in there. So you can tell it you want to do so many images, so much width. Um, set your first spot, which is the little tiny leaf in the front. I tried to get that, but I missed it a little bit. And then hit go. And it did, I think I did 50 images. So the thing that's in the back, the little background back there, is actually in focus also. Okay. Um, why are why do you resize these to a limit of one thousand? The reason why I'm doing that is just to speed up the process. Okay. Otherwise, yeah. we'd be here all day waiting for this to happen. As you can see already, it's running super slow. It's not limited by the the software is not limited by the size of the image. No, I could run those at full resolution and still. Um, you just have to wait for a long period of time to make it happen. Does it have to be JPEG or can you use a DNG or a raw file or what? I started with I started with raw files and processed the raw files together and then took those and opened them up. And I'll, I'll walk through the raw portion of it as well, just to show you how it works. So now it went through the process. We're good to go there. We're golden. Let's go to edit. They're still all selected. Auto blend layers. And I'm going to use stack images. And then we wait and wait and wait. And you can imagine these are 1000 pixels each at quality of 10. Could you imagine running the full raw files and doing this? That's why I, I did it small, so you didn't have to wait for me to do this. But that's a good question, Jim. Yeah, you would just go out for dinner and come back and hope that it's done. <laughs> and hope <laughs> that it's done. 
it'd so Michael, you said Michael, you said that your software is doing the focus stacking for you. If you don't have that kind of software in your camera, can you give some pointers on how to shoot it? Focus on the very front and then slightly go backwards towards the back in various steps. I would try to do about 20 steps, just focus on, I'm pointing at my screen right here, where to step on each step. Um, so what I would do is start right here, then go right here, 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 all the way back to, well, I, I'd go all the way back and keep going. Um, and you can see, let's do this, let's do a crop. Somebody said about every half inch before they came out with the software is how they were stacking previously. So you can see what we did here. Um, it's sharp from front to back. This area right here is a little bit soft. So that shows that I didn't have that area in focus to start with. But for the rest of the way, it's sharp all the way back. So the camera did all that work. So what you do is you select all the layers, go to edit, auto align, finish that, go to edit, auto blend, and then it blends everything. It does all the masking for you. So if I turned off that mask, you can see that it masked, it masked it out for me. Mm -hmm. And little by little, it starts going through and saying, okay, this is where we're taking out, we're adding in. Um, and Photoshop does all the work for you. At this point, everything is highlighted. All I have to do is hit Command or Control E, which is Merge Visible, and it merges everything down for me into one small layer. So down to the bottom left, I went down from 330 seven megabytes command e down to nine megabytes so it made it a whole lot smaller so let's go ahead and close that out don't save and what i'll do is i will go to the raw files photos 2023 and focus stack and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, say, seven right now so that we don't have super time consuming. And what I can do is just hit enter, which will bring up all seven in camera raw. And I'm going to hit command or control A, which selects all the images. And here I can make my controls or my changes that I want to make. So if I want to drop my highlights down a little bit, um, optics, remove chromatic aberration, lens profile. Don't want to use color mixer. I go to color. I'm going to raise up the, the tone just a little bit, make it warmer. Saturation, sure, why not? Let's oversaturate like everybody does on, on Facebook. That's about the right saturation, right? Mm -hmm. let's go about a plus eight or so detail i could add sharpening to it but i normally don't i do if i sharpen i'll sharpen at the end um using ai software for that lens blur i'm not going to do geometry sure let's hit a for auto and you can oh. see that it did the back line for me, made it nice and level. No excuses anymore. Now I'm going to hit done. And that closed them and made the changes for me. And at this point, I can go to tools and Photoshop image processor. And we'll go to a thousand like we had before. You can 
unclick the resize if you want to run them full size, but I want to do it small so we can do a little bit faster work here. And you got to make those noises while you're doing this. Um, <laughs> it goes much faster when you got music going. Um, I like classic rock because it just makes everything go a whole lot faster. Wow, that's going to take a while. I, I think the music you need for this may be the one that I think it was called the syncopated clock. Hmm. <laughs> or the Jeopardy theme music. Do, yeah, right. Do, do. right. <laughs> I like classic rock because it just it's got that really good beat and gets you rocking up here. And... You know, it may be obvious, but uh, it's really t the question of doing it uh, when the camera won't do it automatically. It, it, assuming you're on a tripod, which you need to be, the one technique is to change your focus point, uh, dot, 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 as you go along. Andre Ballo, who is a member of SIPA, who is the master at this, actually turns the, the lens, the focus on the lens, a little bit at a time as he's looking at it through the uh, back LED on the camera. But either way, that's kind of the way you accomplish it. Right. Um, um, Andre does some amazing work like that. Yeah. He'll he'll do he'll do he'll do a hundred, a hundred and fifty shots of a bug. And not only does he stack them, but you saw where Michael did the, you know, showed you the uh, the masking of each one. He actually goes through each individual mask and masks in and out the errors that the uh, camera makes. I think the judges sometimes look at his flower shots or his bug shots and think they're over sharpened. And it's just simply because he's got so much detail out of a hundred images uh, stacked together. And I don't have time to do that. No, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Was there another question out there? Yeah. Can you explain what you just said? You said for cameras that don't do it, you said something about focus point and something about change the focus with the lens. Well, yeah, people get. Confused. I don't know the difference because the only way I focus is to change my lens because I'm assuming this is all being done in manual. You would do um, manual focus. Yeah, yeah, but what? So, what is focus point versus what the second option of changing the lens? Well, I mean, moving the lens. You're letting. You're basically letting the lens. You're you're picking. You know, you may want to. You want to make sure that that little tiny leaf down at the bottom there is is sharp. Mm -hmm. so you put, put your focus point on that. Oh, leaf. oh, okay. I got it. Sorry. Then okay, got it. Then. Camera would do it and then yeah. put it up and put your focus point on where you think the next spot is and then the next spot and then the next spot. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Thank you. I yeah, thought you I, were doing something that was more automatic and I didn't figure. Uh, okay. No, that's fine. that's how I would do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, essentially, it's doing the same thing. It's just that one way you're doing it manually and the other way you're letting the camera find yeah. the focus. Okay, thank I, you. I think that's where Andre came up with that half, every half inch. Um, you know, it's going to depend on your on how big the shot is. But uh, when I was up at SIPA, he had mentioned a half inch, go about a half inch every time, quarter to a half inch. So just depends on the size of your shot, the depth of it, too. Yeah, exactly. it'll, depend on, it'll depend on the focal length of your lens and the subject matter. And, uh, you know, I do it with architectural and landscape photography. And that's a whole lot different than doing it with a macro. So have you heard about the global lens, the global focus now that's coming out where everything is focused at one time? That'd be interesting to oh. see. And, they and then also, it out. I'd, I'd like to make sure that I have control over what I have in focus a the lot new, of times. I don't know if it's global focus. It's global. I think that all the pixels... I go uh, at the same time. Record at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. So here I went into, I'm still in bridge. I went into tools to, I'm down from tools to Photoshop, Photoshop to load files into Photoshop layers like we did before. See how long it takes to do this. Actually, that went fairly quick. Good. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to select all the layers. I have the top one selected. Hold shift. If you only want one layer 
you can hold control or command and pick the layers that you want one at a time. Um, and then we'll go to edit, auto align. Let's see how long this will take. Hopefully it's quick, there's only six layers. Just that quick. And you can see even on a tripod, it's a little bit off. You can see the checkerboards at the corners. So we'll go to edit, down to auto blend, click OK. This should go a lot faster because there's only six layers to play with. Could you imagine if you shot 100 or 150 layers, how long it takes to get there? You can see it's nice and sharp here. It's not sharp in the back because I didn't do enough layers, um, enough shots to get it there. But that gives you a rough idea. That was going from raw, converting it to smaller. I can do bigger, but it's going to take forever to process it, and we don't have the time on here for pulling that one off. So, what kind of questions you got? So is there, what's the big advantage of doing it in RAW? You can control everything. You can process it to your specifications for highlights and shadows. And, okay. yeah. and I can do them all at one time. I can batch process them. Um, you can do the same thing in Lightroom. I just happen to use Bridge because that's how I was raised. I was raised a Chevy man, so I use Bridge. Ford people use Lightroom. Dodge people use whatever other software is out there somewhere. <laughs> so any any software will actually do the work for you. Questions? Just a, a statement. I, I said this the last time you, you had one of these. I think this example you used is excellent, Michael. Thank um, you. What, one I've done a, a lot of this in macro, almost exclusively flowers in the past. And I, I used a dedicated focus stacking program. There's, there's a couple of them out there. One is called Helicon Focus. And another, the one I use is called Zareen, Z-E-R-E-N-E, -E -E, Zareen. And it works a whole lot faster than Photoshop. And for me, since when I started using it, I didn't know diddly about Photoshop or Mask or anything. It um, it worked much easier for me. It, it I, I was just looking at one I I played with recently. Um, it was a, a a near one to one shot of a, a wild cucumber, and I had twenty two pictures, and I converted them into tips. And they reach 144 megabytes. And it stacked that in a reasonable short, didn't seem like a very, I, I didn't time it. It couldn't have been more than a minute, maybe a minute and a half. And the the one advantage of Zareen, well, there's two advantages. One of them is it has a retouch capability built into it. So it allows you to step from layer to layer and do something that's very much akin to cloning you, like you find a, a, a spot that um, has unusual, has a bad artifact, you can go to the layer above or the layer below and clone the material out. So it's really good at that. And uh, I've already forgot what the second thing that was good about it. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. And uh, I know Helicon will, I think, will allow you to input raw images if you want to. Okay. Cool. Helicon, I think, is the is the really popular one for the people that are kind of serious about it. It works well. It's very fast. Yeah, the the one. Oh, I remember the other. The thing that I find best about Zareen is there's an extremely good support network for that. <clears throat> In that the guy who wrote Zareen has a website dedicated to this sort of work. Uh, that's good because support you need support to be able to pull and, this and, off. And I I looked at the Helicon support pages just a few months ago and it looked really sparse to me. Um, not not nearly as active, let's yeah. put it that way. And you don't have to use this for macro photography only. You can also use this for landscape, uh, commercial buildings. 
um, so you can get that depth of field that goes beyond beyond F16. So you can push it and make it look like F300 or something. So you got <laughs> all the way there. And no, I didn't shoot those at F2.8 to make a make a statement. I shot them at F16 with the macro lens up close, so that you'd have you could see the progression there. Any other questions or comments? Comments or questions? A little off topic. Um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, you asked about uh, vector versus uh, uh, vector uh, images versus. Uh, um, yeah, I'm having a senior moment. Pixel pixel images, and that relates very directly to smart objects, which inspired me to be doing. Uh, a little session on smart object and the difference with vectors. And I'll be doing that in November for SIPA. So anybody that wants a little more information on that, feel free to join us. Cool. Anything else? Going once, going twice. Liz, you look like you want to ask something. No, I, I thought it was a great example okay. that you put together. No, I thought that was perfect. Let me go ahead and turn off the recording.